<laughs> well, just a little recap. Organized a UWF chapter at Princeton Day School. This is when she was in high school. 1948, they were meeting at the home of Albert Einstein in Princeton, New Jersey. National Student Chairman of the United World Federalists, Secretary General of the World Student Federalists, Secretary, Young Adult Council for Social Welfare, Employee, Pakistan Delegation to Economic and Social Council. Made a round trip uh, around the world speaking tour, 20 countries, financed by 50 U.S. chapters of the United World Federalists. Undertook a personal effort in Saigon, trying to head off the war between the North and the South Vietnam. Oh, you screwed that, that up. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 Bad writing oh. um, by Larry, oh. not me, uh, because I what I what I wrote is that when I arrived for this meeting with the South Vietnamese who were supporting the World Federalists, people expected me to do something uh, like that, but I had no power. I didn't. Well, uh, no. you and your excuses. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the Vietnam War, Lucy. <laughs> That's what I heard it say. <laughs> so she volunteered work on behalf of the world movement for world federal government. She was chairman of the executive, executive committee of the world federalist movement. Special assistance to the secretary general of the second world conference to combat racism. Oh yeah, let me say something about that because the first, the first world conference to combat racism, um, the delegates from uh, lots of European countries and lots of um, capitalist, um, slightly racist countries walked out, and uh, the third world uh, that was that was held in Geneva, and I happened to be there, and I saw all these delegates walking out because um, they couldn't agree to. I mean, the, the, one of the issues that had to do with the, the status of black people in South Africa, the, the, the apartheid system in South Africa. But the Second World Conference, where I was the um, assistant to uh, James Jonah, who came from, uh, from West Africa, we were able to uh, uh, get uh, the different a African delegates to work together and to uh, support making changes in the apartheid system. Oh, no. Okay, Lucy. So, <laughs> to continue, special assistant to the general, uh, second, to the secretary general of the second world conference to combat racism. Yeah, that's from what there. I was just talking about. Yeah. Political affairs officer in the Department of Disarmament Affairs, secretary of the UN Disarmament Commission, UN Press Liaison Officer, 1990 and 1995 Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty and Review Conference, Executive Director and Program Director of the Economics and for Peace and Security, Executive Director for Center of World Peace Studies, Vice Chairman of the Council of the World Federalist Movement, President of the New York Chapter of Citizens for Global Solutions. And by the way, I had a call from Ron Glossop. I had asked him to, uh, uh, if he had something to say uh, uh, about Lucy, Ron said, Make sure they understand that Lucy was the savior of the New York chapter of the mm -hmm. World Federalists. Mm -hmm. She really, really took control of that and made that uh, happen over a period of time. He mm -hmm. said that's a real, uh, a real hallmark of her uh, volunteer work as a World Federalist. Mm -hmm. And she was uh, president of the New York chapter then of CGS. And she served as chairman of our World Federalist Institute for many years and uh, was a, a key organizer in that and has just been ever present. Um, I, uh, I don't have a, uh, a long prepared speech. What I have is um, I was asked by, by uh, Peter Orvetti, who does our editing for uh, our various uh, house organs and and newsletters and, and our um, uh, uh, mail pieces and the uh, Mondial uh, Journal. Um, he said, uh, I want to uh, print something, uh, but it's going to be before you do your speech, so I want to know what you're going to say. 
And I said, I don't know what I'm going to say. I, I never know what I'm going to say. And, and he said, well, you better tell me what you're going to say because I want to print it before you say it. So I said, okay. So I, 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 I wrote what I was going to say. So here's what I'm going to say. <laughs> I've been honored to work alongside Lucy Webster since we first met in the mid-80s. I was a WFA newbie then, while Lucy had already logged three and a half decades of later labor and leadership in the cause of World Federation. Her positive, joyful, optimistic persona and her enduring youthfulness belied the, the lengths and intensity of her labors. For a person of her acute sensitivities and awareness, observing the unrelenting suffering through decades of war upon war had to be emotionally draining. But now, just as then, Lucy approaches every day with optimism rooted in a belief that humanity can mitigate its destructive impulses by building a system of enforceable world law. Lucy is ever the bright spot in the room. One of her most notable and enduring characteristics is her consistent willingness to defend and support those few whose behavior might exasperate everyone else beyond their limit of tolerance. She exhibits a sort of trademark kindness when kindness has worn thin with her colleagues. She sees the good in every person, no matter their demeanor or how much they may test one's equanimity. So that's what I wrote. So now uh, I can honestly tell Peter that yes, I did say that. <laughs> So, um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to say uh, what what I else I have is is a remark from Stan Lankowitz, who um, I also talked with today, and he said to say this. He sends his greetings from Phoenix, by the way. <clears throat> and I called him to Phoenix. Phoenix, and I Phoenix. called him to report that uh, we'd be doing this presentation to Lucy, and he. Uh, said, if and when the day comes when the world is safe under a federal union, it will be because a small handful of people had the vision, the courage, and the persistence to make it so. Lucy Webster is one of that handful. Isn't that right, Donna? Um, I, I, or do you want do you want me to read it, or do you want to do it? Um, I can do it. Sure. Can, and say who Renee, it, Renee Wadlow is. So, uh, oh, Renee Wadlow is the uh, president of Association of World Citizens. And Renee says, friends, I can be with you only in spirit, as this award is presented to Lucy Webster for her long efforts for World Federation as an avenue to peace and justice. I would like to be with you and Lucy, since Lucy and I have been worked together since the early 1950s in Princeton as student federalist and as representatives in the Young Adult Council of the National Social Welfare Assembly. He says a lot. Um, at today at a time when the U.S. Was, has withdrawn from several arms control treaties with Russia, I think it is vital to reread the book that Lucy Webster edited with Bill Epstein, We Can Avert a Nuclear War, marking the 25th anniversary in 1982 of the creation of the Pugwash Conferences. Mm. As we prepare in 2020 for a review of the NPT, oh dear, I don't know what NPT is. non political Treaty. Non <laughs> we can reread with profit, we can avert a nuclear war and strengthen our coordinated efforts. Lucy Webster was always concerned with outreach to bring in others in order to reach a critical mass to have the needed impacts on government. This is still our common cause. Well, I would like to, uh, I'd like to present your award now, and then if other people would like to speak, and if you'd like to yeah, speak, could through, I just you say one thing about? <laughs> <laughs> yes, she can. One, one sentence. Renee um, Wadlow. Is a French, is a French citizen who, who's bound. Came to the uh, I don't know. Sorry. It's all right, Lucy. Go yeah. ahead. Take a breath. Take a breath. Take, take a, a breath. breath and say it. If you can cry with anybody, you can cry with us. It, it has been so um, 
left France to come to the United States because of the Nazis during the war. And um, nothing bad happened. It was all very good. But it's very sad that he had to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we knew each other when we were in high school. And um, although he, he went to a, um, a, a, a um, boarding school called Petty, which is um, about, I don't know, 15 miles south of Princeton, so I didn't see him that often. But I was really pleased when um, he, he was elected uh, student chairman of UWF uh, after I had that job mm -hmm. and after I was, I was no longer a student. <laughs> thank you. No, mm -hmm. thank you. Wow. Thank you, Lucy. Well, here we have oh. a Picasso doll that oh. um, Donna and I collaborated on deciding about what to, what to present to you for your Lifetime Achievement Award. Mm -hmm. and, okay. and it's um, uh, inscribed Citizens for Global Solutions Award for Lifetime Achievement, Lucy Law Webster, November 2nd, 2019. Yay. We can write a nuclear war. Um, Bill Epstein uh, was a very good friend of mine uh, for many, many years, and uh, he was also a good friend of Pierre Picasso. And, um, oh my! And we we visited uh, Picasso's uh, oh studio my. once or twice in the oh summer. Did you know the story? No, no, I did not. Oh, I had no, no idea. idea. Didn't we just? And, 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 uh, the, uh, I'm not surprised. The various things no, in, the, in the UN building, which are uh, paintings or, I don't know, you call it paintings, but it's pieces of this and that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Collage. Collages. Collages. Collages by Picasso, which Bill Epstein um, more or less solicited and decided where to put them and so forth. So I was involved in all that for many, many years. Great. Well, now you have a little Picasso for your wall. Yeah. Uh, so uh, 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 Tom would like to say something. Some, to say some, would somebody else like to talk? <laughs> <laughs> would somebody important have anything to say? <laughs> My friend. <laughs> this will be real quick. Um, if we had, like they do in the army, you know, all the battles you've been in, and then you get a little something mm. for each uh -huh. one, she'd be weighed down like this. I mean, she'd have so many of them. That's number one. Number two, when I came into the organization in 1983, uh, Lucy, that was 37 years ago, uh, was still a stunner. She was also, she had so much knowledge about the Federalists and right. so many battle scars. So I, I would listen to it all the time. Then we had a, a Federalist meeting, uh, you know, conference. And, you know, you have to fill out the thing. And it said, would you like a roommate? And I said, yes. And who would you like to be? I said, Lucy Webster. <laughs> so I did this for a decade. A decade. And not one person ever mentioned it. Not one. But anyway, I still love you, sweetie. <laughs> I was unclear if I was going to say this until Camarella spoke up. <laughs> but I, I joined WFA as a student member uh, in 1990. I had just started graduate school. I was a little bit older than Sammy and Hannah, but not all that much. And we had this Leadership Development Institute. I remember it very vividly. It was Lakeside in Wisconsin. And there were a number of, you know, handsome, charming young men there. 
And we all had crushes on Lucy. Who <laughs> <laughs> was, I'm doing the math, you're 50 something then. And I mean, Lankowitz was one of them, Larry. We would just talk and say, what is it about her? I mean, she, we're obviously not the same generation, but she, she just had this. There they are. There they are. There they are. Stan Lankowitz smitten by Lucy Webster. Mm. So there was just something then, Lucy, about your charisma and your charm and your grace and your enduring beauty and your incredible knowledge and passion about the cause that captivated all of us. My crush is not quite gone yet. <laughs> But the one other thing I want to say is that, uh, Larry mentioned this, it's a pretty remarkable moment in both our history as a movement and Lucy's history as a person, that when she was a charismatic, dynamic, brilliant, young high school girl, she sat cross-legged on the floor talking about peace and war in the living room of Albert Einstein. I mean, it, it's a tale that I tell to people when I'm just trying to let people know that we are a serious organization with a serious history. But I guess what I want to say in closing, Lucy, is, you, you know, you've told me many times, well, that really meant a lot to me. And, of course, Einstein was Time Magazine's person of the century, so that was a big deal in your life. But I guess I would like to say, Lucy, I think it was probably a big deal in Einstein's life, too. You know, I mean, Einstein was pretty old then, and he was toward the end of his life. He died in 1955, but having brilliant, charismatic, ambitious people, not just women. I mean, in this case, Don, I don't really mean it as women. I just, I just mean to have all these young people come to his, uh, his living room and talk about carrying the torch that he is one of our most articulate uh, proponents of. I think that probably meant a lot to Einstein, and somewhere Einstein is happy that you are still carrying the torch and passing it on to new generations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tom can talk. What's that? Tom, I mean, if Tom Camarelli. Yeah, can really. We can listen to anybody at this point. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, uh, both of the two people who preceded me. I uh, started working at the national level about 1980. I thought I was the only one who had a crush on Lucy. Join the club. a large group. I had no idea. <laughs> I'll arm wrestle you. My, over. <laughs> my memory of Lucy through the 80s is we had a lot of young Turks uh, starting. Uh, there, were, there was me, and there was Tad, and there was uh, this guy behind me, and Tom. Uh, and we were all starting, and we all had ideas. We knew what needed to be done. And we would say, okay, what we need to do is we need to change the uh, UN in this way, we need to do this, we need to do that, so on and so forth. You know, 10 years ago, we decided blah, 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 and we'd all have our ideas. And then towards the end of the meeting, there'd be a quiet little voice that would say, well, actually, <laughs> and then you would tell us what really happened 10 years ago and what we've done and how you actually make changes at the UN and how the UN actually works. Lucy was our voice of reality um, in our meetings and she was even in, in the in the early 80s was uh, the heart of the World Federalist Association in the United States. She went all the way back to the beginning and she was our anchor even then. And that's enough. Thank you. <clears throat> I'd like to have a hundred or a thousand Lucy Websters, mm. Mm. but tonight we have our Lucy Webster mm. to be grateful for, mm -hmm. and that's why we're doing this, and thank you, Lucy, and congratulations, and we appreciate and love you so much. Thank you. Yeah.